would be totally, totally disturbed. I would never let them watch YouTube again without me being there like every second. It's supposed to help parents have some peace of mind when they let their children online to watch videos, but it seems that some of the filters aren't really working. It's the end of the world for YouTube again. Times are changing, especially for children. Playgrounds are empty because kids are spending more time on computers and iPads than playing outside. The time we're living in has changed the way children experience childhood forever. Some might say that this is for the better because of efficiency, but in terms of kids' content, it's for the worst. The era of YouTube kids. A video app made just for kids. That's what YouTube calls its family-friendly sub-platform, YouTube Kids. Now, the implications of this slogan are crystal clear. It means that all content is filtered to be child-friendly and safe for younger audiences. At least, that's what it seems to imply. But in recent years, that's far from the truth. YouTube Kids is an alternate version of YouTube that's meant to be just for kids. Parents can download the YouTube Kids app on their mobile devices or access the platform through their computers. There are two options for parents when it comes to letting their kids use the site. They can either set up parental controls that let them handpick what videos their children can see or give the kids full access to browse and explore all the content that the platform has to offer. Like the regular YouTube platform, YouTube Kids has all the standard features, likes, subscriptions, a search bar, and an explore page. At first glance, everything seems pretty safe. All the videos on the YouTube Kids platform have to go through a series of search filters and checks to ensure that the content is appropriate for young viewers. However, this isn't a foolproof system, and more often than not, something terrible manages to sneak its way through. The problem with YouTube's filters. Time and time again, red flags have been raised about YouTube's flawed filtering system, but nothing substantial seems to have changed. Inappropriate videos have infiltrated YouTube kids, often showing popular children's characters in violent and even scenarios, and we've learned there is little being done about it. Back in 2017, the media was all over one disturbing phenomenon that emerged on the internet. Creepy content hidden inside kids' videos. These inappropriate videos all had bright and colorful thumbnails featuring the likeness of popular characters from Disney or Marvel. Some even had actual kids on them. From afar, they seem normal, but the more you watch them, the weirder they get. In the thumbnails, the characters are often depicted in distressing situations crying. And that was just the surface of it all. The creators behind these videos were highly skilled at hiding their harmful motives. They carefully crafted every aspect of the video from the thumbnail images to the video titles and tags, ensuring that everything appeared normal. The video titles often included words like education or nursery rhymes to deceive parents into believing that these videos were suitable for their children. Kids watching silly fun videos about minions, despicable me, and then this ridiculous insanity pops up for them. Maddie fell into a trap. The disturbing video in the suggested next video queue follows a normal harmless video. One click and it's down the rabbit hole. Even the first few minutes of the videos would seem completely appropriate. But as the video played, what was on screen would change from something friendly to vulgar animations or straight up jump scares. This was definitely not meant for kids. They may just be a video that looks like it's intended for kids and then it goes horrible at about the three minute mark and kids are like crying and super disturbed. With so much of this content popping up, this clearly wasn't a one-off incident on YouTube Kids. Countless videos started surfacing, and that's when the strange and disturbing niche of content was given a name, Elsa Gate. The Horrors of Elsa Gate. So we've seen concerning examples where seemingly innocent videos lead to disturbing content. But these issues aren't just on YouTube Kids. They are everywhere on the internet. There's a clear need for safe online learning spaces free from inappropriate content. And Skillshare offers just that. Welcome to Skillshare, the largest online learning community for creatives. They offer a wide variety of classes from illustration, graphic design, photography, to music and productivity. So when I was in college, I absolutely hated the lecture style teaching method. Honestly, I just slept in a lot of my classes or was on like Photoshop or something. But Skillshare has a learn by doing approach where each member can create and share a project after completing a class and you can learn at your own pace. So many school teachers don't have real world experience, but Skillshare classes are led by industry professionals, which means that you are learning from the best. Take for example, this course right here, how to start and grow your YouTube channel. So you might be thinking, okay, there's literally thousands of videos on YouTube about growing. Well, the difference is that many YouTube gurus don't 
don't know what they're talking about. And Ali, the guy who created this class, is a doctor and YouTuber with over 4.8 million subscribers. To start learning now, click my link in the description below. The first 500 of you guys to use my link will get an entire one month free trial of Skillshare. Thank you a ton to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. We all know Elsagate as one of the most viral internet horror stories to date. It was a time where parents feared letting their kids go online. But that was a thing of the past, right? Unfortunately, that may not be the case. Elsagate is the type of video that features inappropriate content disguised as child friendly. The name comes from the popular Disney character Elsa from the Frozen franchise. Elsa, among many other children's characters, is a frequent face for a lot of these bizarre videos. Why? Because it's an effective tactic. These creators were able to easily trick kids into clicking their videos by using characters that are well known as the face of the content. And for parents, seeing these similar animated characters gives you a peace of mind. But that's exactly the kind of mentality that these creators want you to have in order to blindside kids. In 2017, the New York Times released an article that blew the roof off of this once low-key niche. Parents tried to keep their kids away from these videos, but being with them every single time they watch just wasn't possible. So it begs the question, who are the people behind these disgusting videos? There are so many channels on the YouTube Kids app that have had their videos flagged over and over again, only for them to return with the same terrible content under different names. If parents report these videos, YouTube does take some of them down, but then the creators just re-upload them like minutes sure. later. The inappropriate content in these videos varied, ranging anywhere from crude animations to dark messaging to horror. But they all held one major similarity. They were raking in views and money. One particular channel, Super Zeus TV, had over 1.8 million views back in 2018. The channel specialized in cartoons featuring two girl characters, one with blue hair and one with pink hair. These videos would often feature the characters in distressing situations, depicting them as unhappy or even terrified in a wide variety of weird scenarios. With its bright colors, animation style, and child-centric marketing, it's obvious that Super Zeus TV targeted kids. They managed to quickly climb up the rankings in YouTube Kids despite being a much newer channel, joining in on the Elsa Gate wave much later. With just 30 uploads, this amount of views was pretty impressive for a newer channel, but this sort of growth wasn't just the work of a one-person operation. The channel was revealed to be linked to a store called superkidsshop.com, which is a registered business in Ho Chi Minh City, Vietnam. The New York Times reported that there was a team of over 100 employees working on the animations. This seemed like enough to confirm that Elsa Gate was more than just a moral dilemma, but rather a profitable business model for brands. Because with high view counts comes advertising opportunities. But what sorts of brands want to be associated with such a controversial channel? Well, there's a market for everything. Which is why Elsa Gate videos caught the attention of several large-scale organizations like Fairplay, which stands up for kids against the manipulation of big tech. In 2015, executive director Josh Golan led the organization in partnering with the Center for Digital Democracy to file a complaint with the FTC. This complaint was directed towards YouTube Kids and its deceptive marketing, with an emphasis on Elsagate videos. The complaint accused YouTube of acting as if they were above the law by ignoring COPA, the federal law that protects children's privacy online. YouTube often defends itself by saying that there's too much content for humans to review, so they use automated systems instead. And when these systems let suspicious marketing materials slip through the cracks, they can't hold all the blame. This old complaint was probably one of the reasons that started the fight against Elsagate and played a big part in making COPA rules apply to YouTube. But that's a story for later on, because first we need to dive into just how damaging Elsagate truly was and what horrors lurked within its shadows. The disturbing niche of animations. Animation was one of the biggest categories of videos in the realm of Elsa Gate. That's because channels that were able to guarantee views by creating bootleg versions of popular and beloved children's characters. They knew that they could slap Spider-Man or My Little Pony on pretty much everything. Perhaps one of the most well-known channels for these sorts of animation parody videos was Kids Tune TV. If you turned on the news while they were reporting on Elsa Gate, you'd likely see one of their videos being used as reference, or at least one from their many channels. 
channels. Kids Tune TV, Super Pups TV, Fun Kids Tune, all different names, but all the same sort of content. The videos usually featured Mickey and Minnie Mouse lookalikes engaging in unsettling interactions, which of course was their main selling point. By masking its dark messaging behind Minnie's signature polka dotted bow, these channels were able to capture the attention of a ton of unsuspecting kids. And with so many different channels to re-upload the same content to, they seem to be avoiding YouTube's filters. These sorts of videos were dominating the search results. Redditors on the ElsaGate subreddit decided to experiment with different keywords. They ended up finding out that this content was usually the first to pop up on most Mickey Mouse related searches. In one particular video, Minnie Mouse is in a changing room with her mother trying on new clothes. And suddenly Mickey Mouse shows up and swaps her mother's camera with one that causes Minnie's clothes to disappear. In another subcategory of these videos, Minnie and Mickey were aged down and animated as babies, usually depicted in dangerous situations. This one video called Mickey Mouse and Minnie Mouse Learns Colors Funny Story shows Mickey crying after finding out that he has bugs in his stomach. This other video, Mickey and Minnie Mouse Transforms, has Minnie Mouse screaming in fear after being kidnapped. And these two famous mice aren't the only characters that were being illegally copied. The likes of Peppa Pig, the Joker, and even the Gummy Bear from the Gummy Bear song had all become returning characters in bootleg animations. Similarly, these creators of inappropriate content also produce videos featuring video game characters. On the YouTube Kids app, you can find PG-friendly gameplay videos of games like Roblox, Minecraft, and Mario. And many channels have taken it one step further and used the video game character model Models to create their own original animations. But when it comes to popularity, there's one series of animations that takes the crown. Skibbity Toilet. Skibbity Toilet is undoubtedly one of the most viral internet web series at the moment. Its creator currently has over 35 million subscribers on YouTube with his most popular video having over 104 million views. There are over 60 episodes of Skibbity Toilet spread out among 21 seasons. The episodes feature character models from the games Gary's Mod, Half-Life 2, and Counter-Strike Source, who are morphed together with toilets. The series follows two sides, the suited individuals with camera heads and the toilets, as they fight against each other in a never-ending action-packed war. When you first look at these videos, it might just seem like a video game lover's fever dream. However, these meme-like videos have caused a bit of an uproar in the parenting world. There was a meme on the internet called Skibbity Toilet Syndrome, which is basically a fake illness that refers to children who watch way too much Skibbity Toilet. As a result, these kids have tried to replicate what they've seen in the episodes. The videos often include explosions, spinning around in toilets, or other weird scenarios. And although they may seem harmless, many kids tried to recreate these viral Skibbity Toilet videos, which results in kids being put in possibly dangerous situations, such as stuck inside home appliances or cramming themselves into small spaces. Despite a majority of people calling Skibbity Toilet syndrome a hoax. Some parents are genuinely concerned because children can be at real risk if they try to imitate what they see in the episodes. Setting aside the robot human toilets, another group of familiar characters dominated the YouTube Kids Explore page, My Little Pony. And although they had their fair share of inappropriate videos, there was more content that seemed to be associated with the fandom that kids should not have been seeing. In the My Little Pony community, there's an entire sub-community of those that are a fan of both the franchise and the horror genre. While most of this sub community is made up of adults, their videos kept appearing on the YouTube Kids app. And that's because YouTube has a habit of confusing cartoons, especially ones with popular kid characters. One of these videos was called Cupcakes HD, infamous among the bronies, which is what the adult My Little Pony fandom call themselves. Cupcakes HD was an extremely graphic video that had the ponies doing some seriously messed up stuff. However, since the disturbing content was sandwiched between clips of ponies dancing in sync. The YouTube algorithm considered it acceptable to promote these videos to kids. This video was very popular and was watched by so, so many children who didn't know any better, which honestly is, is very sad. It is a terrifying video. I watched it as a kid 
I couldn't make it through the entire thing, but this is definitely one of those that kept me up at night. There were countless other videos in the My Little Pony community that had similar, if not worse, scenarios. The entire fandom was infamous for creating animations that started off lighthearted, but transform into something much more evil just minutes into the video. But all of this managed to get even creepier. The horror-loving bronies continued their downward spiral, eventually breaking off into niche subsections with interests that are too dark to fully explain. Fluffy Pony. These are two words that you might associate with something cute and adorable, but you couldn't be more wrong. In fact, this is actually a subgenre of My Little Pony content that glamorizes the mistreatment of the ponies to the furthest extent. With so many kids searching up My Little Pony on the daily, it's no surprise that some kids stumble upon it. And believe it or not, many of these videos can still be found on YouTube today. But if you thought the cartoons were the end of the story for YouTube kids, you might want to think again because it's not just animation that thrives in Elsa Gay. Live action does too. The dark side of live action. While there are a ton of inappropriate animations out there, live action content on Elsagate is also just as bad. There are many content creators that specialize in creating children's content on YouTube who are willing to do almost anything to secure the likes, subscribers, and advertising dollars. Many adult creators have catered their content toward kids because it's a highly profitable niche on YouTube. But rather than making child-friendly content, their videos often toe the line between appropriate and inappropriate. 123Go is one of those channels that feature adult creators making content aimed for kids. But instead of making their content more family friendly, they took a different route. One of their most popular videos is called Seven Funny DIY School Pranks, featuring several prank ideas for kids to do at school, but some of the ones that are shown are far from being school appropriate, with some being dangerous. Take a small wad of Play-Doh and cut it into a square with an X-Acto knife. Now drop it into an empty gum wrapper like this one here. Care to share the wealth there? Why, of course. How rude of me. Ever wonder if Play-Doh tastes like gum? We're about to find out. With acts like this being marketed as pranks for kids and potentially being harmful, it's no wonder why parents are tentative about letting their kids freely browse the platform. And of course, we can't forget about one of the most infamous types of Elsa Gay videos, the cosplay live actions. These videos have adult creators dressed up as characters like Elsa, Spider-Man, or the Joker acting out pre-written and planned scenes for the camera. But more often than not, these scenes contain themes that are clearly inappropriate for kids kids. In one video, the Joker can be seen interacting with Elsa, but the situation takes a turn when he essentially kidnaps her with a jump rope. And to make her seem happy about the situation, he sprays her with a love potion, making her fall in love with him. On YouTube Kids, there are plenty of actual kid creators, but of course, given their age, their parents are the ones with most of the control behind the camera. And most of the time, the kids have little to no say in the content that actually goes live. Toy Freaks was one of the more popular kids' channels on YouTube. YouTube. The channel had a father and his two daughters as the faces, but rather than showcasing how a family can spend quality time together, the content was actually made at the expense of his two daughters and their happiness. The girls were dressed younger than they actually are, exhibiting baby-like behavior even if they were already much older. Because the dad kept producing disturbing videos of his daughters, the channel got banned. Unfortunately, this sort of family-style content was becoming a norm during Elsa Gate. Plenty of parents took advantage of their kids by pushing them to create content that prioritized profits over the well-being of their children. Between 2015 and 2019, Elsa Gate was becoming a growing problem without any clear solution in sight. But eventually, after being hammered again and again with concerns and complaints, YouTube finally did something to fight back against Elsa Gate, trying to control the damage. We're getting ourselves a new year, a new decade, and most importantly of all, a new YouTube. One that threatens to wipe out huge chunks of content and content creators that you know and love and have been watching since you were young. In 2019, YouTube shocked its creators by announcing the implementation of COPA policies on their platform. COPA, which stands for Children's Online Privacy Protection Act, is a federal law aimed to protect young users of the internet. At the time, YouTube 
had already started addressing the issue of Elsagate by removing more and more videos and monitoring comments for suspicious activity. The platform acknowledged that things needed fixing, and this event forced them to make the change. It was a $170 million fine that they were served in late 2019 by the FTC that finally sealed the deal. If you create content for YouTube, this video is very important to watch as it describes changes to the upload process, all of your existing videos, and potentially your monetization. At first, the backlash was intense. To the surprise and dismay of many content creators, YouTube wasn't only implementing COPA on their kids' platform. They were pushing it onto YouTube as a whole. And of course, with a large number of creators who all specialized in content that varied from G-rated to raunchy and risque, there were plenty that felt like YouTube was slapping their content creators in the face with a policy that restricted their creativity. Content creators were worried about losing their ability to earn money because because they realized that a lot of their previous content wasn't suitable for kids. Some referred to this policy as censorship and saw it as a major challenge for creative expression. Some believed it could be the end of their channels, while others said that it was the end of YouTube as a whole. So what exactly did COPA mean for YouTubers? Now all content that was uploaded needed to be manually marked by the creator as made for kids or not made for kids. But the guidelines weren't clear. Sometimes creators would make mistakes. Whether you were a kid kids channel or not, you were subject to the same sort of strict monitoring by YouTube. Before COPA was in place, there were plenty of channels who marketed themselves as kid-friendly just to get more views. YouTube had a thing for pushing out kids' content, and some creators took advantage of that. Then there are vlog channels that are posing as kid channels just to get more views. But since the platform was cracking down on falsely advertised kids' content, they showed no mercy to anyone who mislabeled their content. Additionally, YouTube was implementing stricter policies to ensure child safety on its platform. This included issuing warnings for videos containing swearing and also demonetizing any vulgar content on the platform. The FTC even mentioned this. Not only can we sue Google and YouTube for compliance with COPPA, but also individual channel owners and content creators. Most content creators had a pessimistic view of YouTube's future after the announcement of the COPPA policy. But putting this aside, did these new changes to the platform actually do what they intended to do? Did it stop Elsagate? The resurgence of Elsagate. YouTube did manage to do right. They cleared up the YouTube Kids app. Mostly. It's a lot more difficult now to find inappropriate content on the YouTube Kids platform than it was before. But there's one fact we need to face. YouTube Kids is not the main platform that children use to watch videos. While YouTube may have tackled the problem on YouTube Kids, most of their younger audience still use the main YouTube platform. And unfortunately, that's where Elsagate has made a return and found its new home. By 2018, YouTube had fully implemented a human curation team with over 10,000 members tasked with looking through videos on their kids' app. This would make it easier for them to weed out harmful content for one half of the platform, but the main YouTube app was still infested with these videos. This time, the Elsagate creators have adapted their content to fit current trends. Disney princesses have been replaced with characters from franchises like Poppy Playtime, Minecraft, and Paw Patrol. In July of 2022, We Got This Covered published an article about the resurgence of Elsagate animations, this time involving the children's TV series Bluey, which featured a blue puppy and his family going on fun adventures. Despite the happy theme of the show, the Bluey animations on YouTube were quite different. The official Bluey Reddit had to issue a warning to parents advising them to avoid these unofficial animations on YouTube. Another franchise that has become common in Elsa Gates' resurgence is Poppy Playtime. Poppy Playtime is an indie horror game that has recently become a fan favorite after being played by popular content creators like Markiplier, and it's quickly becoming one of the fastest growing internet fandoms. But as we've already learned, not all fan made content is appropriate. One of the more popular channels is Kissy Show. This channel creates live action videos while dressed as the game's characters Huggy Wuggy and Kissy Missy. With over 1.9 million subscribers and over 1.2 billion channel views, it seems like Kissy Show may be leading Elsagate this time around. The live actor for the female monster named Kissy Missy can often be seen with her undergarments worn on top of her leggings, or with a low-cut top on which isn't exactly the best attire to be wearing for 
a kid's video. And the theme of the videos are pretty absurd to say the least. And of course, some animators have also joined in on the troubling resurgence of Elsagate, probably motivated by the opportunity to make money from children's content. With Elsagate content now on the regular YouTube platform, creators have gotten even sneakier in dodging YouTube's policies. Many of these channels put disclaimers on their videos or in the description stating that their content is not meant for young audiences. However, the way that they title and market their videos, it just seems like a tactic to get YouTube off their back. And with an ever-growing number of backup channels, they're able to keep making money even if it gets flagged or removed. Ultimately, I do understand that YouTube can't moderate every single video. And with Elsagate making a comeback, if you see something that shouldn't be there, report it. Let's work together to create a safe space for children online. Visual Venture. Wait, before you go, click this playlist to watch more dark internet documentaries because the algorithm will promote my channel more if you guys watch multiple videos. Have an absolutely beautiful week. Peace.